Log, March 23rd, 2016. So the Tick is playing a little bit of Dirty Pool on me. He is putting me in a bit of a sticky wicket because I'm not supposed to be making a lot of videos right now. I'm supposed to be on vacation, ostensibly, but I can't let Tick News pass and not make a Captain's Log. So the second captain's log in as many weeks on the new Tick TV project, and I'm getting more and more excited about this as we're hearing about it. It was a bittersweet thing, certainly, to not have Patrick Warburton uh, back for this show. That was the big thing, of course, that I was most thrilled about when we first heard this announcement uh, several months ago, a couple years ago now, and he had, as I said in my last log about this, he had apparently signed on, and now he He's on a comedy on television, and he's not able to commit to it. So uh, Ben Edlin decided to go ahead and move on without him, make yet a third incarnation of The Tick. And I say bittersweet for a couple reasons. As I mentioned last time, the more I thought about it, the more I thought that even at the risk of this show maybe not performing and people not finding it and not catching on because it won't have that uh, name recognition and the star power that Warburton would bring to it because that's one of, if not really, the big role, I would argue, that people uh, really remember him for as a big starring thing. There's certainly lots and lots of things that people know Patrick Warburton for, but The Tick seems to come up in every conversation I hear people have about Patrick Warburton. Part of that might just be the crowds that, that, that I the circles that I tend to travel in, but it's certainly uh, one of the big things that Patrick Warburton is known for, and it does seem a little bit counterintuitive to make another live-action show without him, but since we have a whole new cast and a whole new Arthur, uh, I think that it makes a whole lot of sense to have another tick and create a brand new dynamic, and I think that there are weirdly, strangely, uh, some maybe different ways to play this character, because Patrick Warburton's was definitely not exactly what we had in the cartoon show and there are there are kind of some different interpretations uh, it's always quirky it's always silly and strange and out there and sometimes borders on really disturbing but uh, there was definitely a, a different a different affect and a little bit more of a bumblingness to Patrick Warburton's tick as I said before I kind of want to see something that is a little bit more like the comics themselves like a direct uh, adaptation of that and if that that's what they're doing. This is the guy. Uh, Peter Stefan, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Sarah Finowitz uh, has, I think, from the more I look into him, exactly the right sense of humor and, and quirky sensibility about him. I didn't immediately know him from anything uh, just looking at his name and his picture. The, the, my first reaction when I saw his picture on the uh, article I looked at was, well, he's got the jaw, he he looks like he's built right, and he certainly has the facial structure for it. But the more I looked into him, he's a comedian, and he... Okay, first of all, British humor... Like, I wouldn't have thought to cast a Brit in this role, and I suppose you could play the tick with a British accent. I can't really imagine that, but he, uh, surely he will fake an American accent. I mean, like, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, is that, is that like, way outside of the realm of pie? Would, would Ben Edlund even consider doing that? I don't know. The Tick is a pretty American, he's a parody of American superheroes, so I really doubt that they'll go there, but British humor sensibilities, this guy's been in Doctor Who, uh, that, that kind of, um, I always thought the Tick had a lot of that, even though it's not a British thing. Ben Edlund is very clearly familiar with that world and borrowing from that kind of stuff, and I've, you know, two of my very favorite comedy things are The Tick and Guardians of the Galaxy, and I, I'm not saying that they are really close things, but they're both super quirky and really strange and bizarre and out there, and I think that uh, just being a British comedian gives the guy a lot of clout to play the tick, but also uh, looking at his uh, creds, and I went to his YouTube channel and looked at a little bit of his comedy, and yeah, this is the guy, folks. I'm stoked about this choice. 
Uh, you have uh, almost certainly seen him in things, even if you don't realize it. He was uh, one of, I think, the guard guys um, on uh, the main planet in Guardians of the Galaxy. He's a character actor and does a lot of these kind of smaller roles. Uh, he had his own show for a couple of years in Britain. I didn't look into, it was just the Peter Serenifiwit show. I don't know if it was a talk show or what, I didn't look into it. Um, but uh, he has sort of starred in things before, uh, but I think that this will probably be, for, as a starring role here in America, the most uh, high-profile thing he's done of, of being the lead and having his own TV show. Uh, but another credit that I was surprised to see, and I didn't realize that uh, big Star Wars buffs will know this already, but he was the voice of Darth Maul in Star Wars Episode One, So they hired this guy to come in and say exactly three lines. And I always knew that that wasn't Ray Park doing those uh, those lines, but I never knew who it was. Oh, it's the guy who's about to play the tick. And isn't it kind of fitting that we're, we're kind of going full circle here, uh, that we've got a veteran voice actor coming in to play the tick, and I, I can't wait to see what his voice sounds like. But uh, what's weird is this could have been, I mean, again, not knowing what his voice sounds like, but this could have been the guy that you get to voice another animated tick, because he does so much voice work, and now we're, uh, we've got him as the live-action tick. I also uh, was was pleased to see the uh, credit for Axe Cop on here, because uh, I've, I've not read uh, really any of that, but I've, I've flipped through it here and there, and I've heard the basic premise of that, and uh, if memory serves, Axe Cop is, it was a comic, and I think it was a, was a web-based thing? It was a comic, and then it became an animated series, and it's written by a guy and, like, his five- or six-year-old son, if I remember correctly, and it's got these really, uh, again, uh, uh, quirky, out-there uh, ideas and just meshing together a whole lot of stuff creatively that you wouldn't usually go together, and, of course, that's the tick. Um, this, uh, this guy is eight years younger than Patrick Warburton, so we're still aiming a little bit older, skewing a little older than I might have expected, uh, but looking at what the man looks like right now, I think he's exactly right for it. I think going with um, a middle-aged guy, a slightly older actor, as opposed to trying to find somebody that is in their mid-twenties or early thirties, uh, but built like the tick, makes a lot of sense because... The, what's weird about the tick is he needs a little bit, I don't want to say world weariness, because he's always a little kid in a grown man's body, And but you need to get the sense that he has been through some stuff even though he doesn't know what a lot of it is, and that's and probably a lot of the stuff that he's been through is part of the reason that he doesn't know what it is. So you always have this sense that the tick could be 30, or he could somehow be 500, 1,000 years old, because he's this nigh-invulnerable guy that doesn't seem to age, but... I've never really pictured the tick as being really young, and I didn't think about that until I started thinking about whether or not Patrick Warburton would still be right for it, because like, he seems a little bit old for the part, but then to come back and play it again, but then the tick the tick's age is totally ambiguous. It's really vague. So, like, I could see maybe a 25-year-old playing it. I could see maybe a, a 50-year-old playing it. And, of course, uh, Patrick Warburton is uh, in his is in his 50s now. And uh, this guy's 43. I also wonder, again, um, partly just because we're skewing older, but, of course, uh, I, that, this, that doesn't necessarily mean anything with this, but I also still kind of wonder how action-driven this is going to be and how, how much... Uh, uh, you know, stunt stuff we're going to see with the tick. Uh, there is an interview that I listened to just a couple minutes of on his uh, YouTube channel with Terrence Stamp, of all people. So I'll link that if you want to go hear that. Uh, Terrence Stamp, one of my absolute favorite actors, and I, of course, love his General Zahn, and this guy playing the tick, uh, talking to each other. But anyway, this is, this is very exciting news, and I still have to wonder how well this show is going to do and if it's going to have difficulty finding traction. It's going to have to really... Like, now it doesn't have, like I said, a big name to really sell itself on because um, Sarah uh, Finowitz is 
certainly well liked it seems but I'm sure there's lots and lots of people who don't know who that is but then I'm sure there's a lot of people that didn't know who Patrick Warburton was until the tick and if only people had found it while it was still on that show could have had legs and been on for four or five years I think considering how much people came to love it after they discovered it well after it went off the air but if Amazon sells it right uh, puts it in of course a lot of their advertising on their website which I'm sure they'll do and on the uh, on commercial commercials for um, things on other platforms if they're able to do that I'm I'm hoping that people notice it and think especially folks that watched the Patrick Warburton series and think well it's not Warburton but it looks like fun and you know hopefully they sell it right and it, it looks like fun and hopefully it's a very different thing from the Patrick Warburton show if Patrick Warburton was still doing this I would have been totally cool with more of the same but considering we already have that premise and it sounds more involved uh with um, with what we've heard already about where Tick and Arthur are in their lives and they rediscover each other and all of that, it uh, it sounds like it's going to be a really different thing, so I'm excited about it. I also bet you money that we are finally going to get a live-action Tick with a face mask. Uh, you can't tell me that 15 years after the live-action series decided there was just no way to get a performance out of... Uh, an actor with a face mask in front of him like that, that you had to uh, leave it open like that. You can't tell me that after all of the superhero stuff, especially now that we've had all this stuff on TV and made look really good and cinematic, that he's not going to have that face mask. And I'm curious to know just how much of it's going to be CG, uh, how much of things with his costume will, will be CG. Uh, honestly, uh, even on a television budget these days, I could even see... CG enhancements to make him look as big as the tick usually is in the comics. Like, they could they could make him, you know, 8, 9, 10 feet tall. It, maybe not 10, but, they, you know, they could, they could make an 8-foot tall tick if they really wanted to and potentially make it look good. Uh, I kind of hope that the antennae, of course, I don't know what the show's going to look like yet, but uh, if it's super, super stylized, then maybe you can get away with some more CG stuff. I kind of hope that at least the, the antennae are still remote-controlled, because that was always really funny in the uh, in the Patch Warburton series. But anyway, what do you folks think of this pick? I, I think it's brilliant. I, I can't wait to see what he does with it. I'm so excited about a fresh take on the tick. Uh, I, I'm just I'm blown away that this is still really happening, and that it's very clearly getting into production and hopefully Amazon uh, buys the pilot and they go forward with it. I am I'm really excited about it. Uh, I wanted to do more Tick reviews. It's been a, a long time what, like three years now since I did uh, Tick Month and did a lot of uh, Tick review stuff and I'm gonna hold off now until we get closer to the premiere of this. I haven't done a full review of the uh, Tick live action show. I did a Superhero Rewind once comparing the animated series pilot to th uh, that pilot, but I've never done anything further with it, and I'm going to wait and do the rewind on that before this comes out, because now we have another show, and I can do what I usually do with uh, stuff that gets rebooted, and review it right before the reboot starts. So anyway, uh, leave your comments, looking forward to reading them, and th this concludes today's Captain's Log.